Hey, welcome to another episode of Freedom on Fire. I'm your boy Rob, Bob TV Brown. Yes, I am a little happy today. Um, now, I previously told you that I am not a Trump supporter. I wasn't a Clinton supporter. I told you that I proudly voted for Jill Stein because I believe that she was the smartest, most rational person in the world, in the room. I just wish you guys could have seen her debate these two knuckleheads. The Democratic Party and the Republican Party right now owns the um, debate committee, the debate commission. And they put up this um, status that you have to reach a certain percentage in order to enter the debates. That is what you call control opposition, controlling the opposition, which is Jill Stein and Jean Baraka to keep their voices from being heard. Why? Because things would have happened like what happened with me. We would have heard how they're thinking about policy, foreign policy, domestic policy. We would learn their thinking on our economic structure. We will learn their th thinking on climate change. We'll learn about their thinking concerning actually implementing Medic uh, Medicare for all, actually implementing a uh, free college for all actually implementing um, a student loan forgiveness program, infrastructure, um, regular basic infrastructure deal, and a green new deal. We would have learned about that stuff, and a lot of people would have been motivated to tell the other two party to kiss their behind, and I'm going for Jill Stein, and that rhymes. Kiss my behind, I'm going to Stein, and that rhymes. <clears throat> and would I vote for her again? You doggone right, I would vote for her again, but I. Like I said, I try to give people an all chance. I'm not rock solid on one person. I'm not rock solid on one person. If Hillary would have won the nomination, and I am glad she did, I am so glad she did, I would have given her a chance at doing right from there. Trump won the presidency. I was giving him a chance to do right from there. And he's messed up a whole lot since then. But in this situation, he did right. Now, one of his promises was he's not going to get involved in a lot of regime change intervention. Now, two things that upset me about Trump, his babying of Israel, and I, 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 you know, I'm a Christian, and Israel is very precious to my faith, but him acting like Israel is supreme, and them actually legislating laws where you can't divest or protest against them, ridiculous. They're not supreme. And then yet at the same time calling <laughs> calling Saudi Arabia, giving them money. These people are the most extreme ideolo ide ideological, both Jerusalem, I mean Israel, and Muslim, I mean um, um, Saudi Arabia. And their legislating and their governing of their people Israel a little bit more different. They got free college, they, you know, universal health care. They got things we need, but yet we're sending them billions of dollars consistently uh, a year. When we come up with every excuse in a book to not pay for health care for all, to not pay for um, a low cost or no cost education when we got the money. Now, that's getting besides the point. Let me get to this point. I said if Donald Trump do something right, I will give him credit for it. And I will shout him out for it. Now, about a couple of months, Donald Trump decided that he's not going to be poking on Syria. He realized that, hey, somebody's playing me here in this Syria situation. But don't worry about it, Donald J. Trump. A lot of people are being played when it comes to Syria. A lot of people actually believe that that Syrian gas attack was brought on by the president of Syria, whom the people love and the people have no problem with is just certain factions which you have here in America some people just don't like Trump some um, that's not pleased with the president and I've been one of them in certain in a whole lot of areas they are what we call rebels so what we normally do because we see resources in another country we try to say that that dictator is bringing harm to his people we did it with Saudi, uh, Saddam Hussein. We thought he had weapons of mass destruction. We say he was killing people. 
killing curves. We don't know if he really killed those curves or not. He probably did. You know, he probably did because dude was a bad man. But how mad, I don't know. We're talking about democracies here. Democracies. We're not talking about real dictatorship. We're talking about democracies. People who we term dictators. His name was President Saddam Hussein. His name was uh, Muammar Gaddafi. President Muammar Gaddafi. His name was President uh, Bashar. It's not like Korea and North Korea. These were democracies. Now I know I'm going kind of long on this, but I want you to see the blueprint. Wow, there's minerals, there, there's gold, there's oil, there's diamonds. There's land that we can build a pipeline through. We got to get a hold of that land. We got to get total control of that land. They're not going to let us work a deal with the control. So what we got to do, label the person an evil madman dictator who don't want to give up his position, who kills his own people so we can go in, move them out, and install our person to run that country. you talking about interfering, interfering in elections, interfering in governing who runs the government. Get out of here, America. You can't talk to nobody about that. You can't accuse Trump of that when you do that yourself. You can't accuse Putin of that when you do that yourself, which this Putin thing has been debunked. Anyway, get into it. Um, Donald Trump decides that, hey, all right, I bombed the bases. I warned Russia. Democrats and liberals get mad because he warned them. Hillary Clinton said, I want to tell them none. That's why you're not President Hillary Clinton. Because you're trying to start a war with Russia. Trump was nice enough to say, all right, I'm about to um, go in there and bomb some of those planes. Get your boys out of there. I'm going to give you enough time. They got the boys out of there. Trump bombed the plane. Trump was being manipulated. Trump, you were being pumped up, punked out because you did exactly what Hillary Clinton wanted. And she was smiling from ear to ear, wetting her ears up, that she got what she wanted and used you to do it. Yeah, because what she wanted to do was take out the air um, security so the ground forces from Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, and ISIS can go in to hopefully topple Bashar Assad and take over the land so we can do business deals with the military complex and control that region and take it away from Russia because that pipeline is going to be built by us, not by them. And that's why they call them our enemy when Russia is really not our enemy. Russia is really trying to be our friend and Russia is really trying to become... Um, Capitalists just like us. And I'm saying that's going to be to their demise because sometimes capitalism is not our best friend because it hurts working people. Now, getting to my point. Trump, I believe Trump realized he was being played. Hey, he's a con artist, so a con artist should be able to know that he's being con, right? Right. So he realized that and decided that I'm not going to be trying to poke fun and threats at Syria because you want me to do that. Uh -uh. No. Matter of fact, I'm going to chill on Syria. I'm going to work with Russia. Ooh, I knew something was going on with him in Russia. No, he's doing the right thing. I'm going to work with Russia to bring peace and stability in that democratic country who keep electing that man as president. Look, you got to understand something, people. Democracy is pretty much new in the world. It's only 200, what, not even 300 years old in the, here in the United States. And so what makes us think we're the beacon of democracy and we can go around schooling everybody on what they need to have instead of what they want? Now I'm getting off top, top of this, I mean, off subject. These people may not want our brand of democracy because it looked like crap. If that means I want my country to go around dominating and bullying around other countries to be like you, I don't want it. I like it the way we got it now. We got our president. We love him. We'll vote him in 15, 20 times if we need to, as long as he's doing right by the people. We call it dictatorship. Not if they're freely to vote for that guy. Not if they're freely to vote for that guy. Let me tell you something. If they vote for somebody else, Ashad would be well taken care of, okay? Because uh, he realized that's not his country. Um, that's the people's country. Now, getting to this. Donald Trump did something that made Democrats in the deep state upset. 
he decided that I'm going to do what Tulsi Gabbard tried to get passed into law and that's to stop funding terrorism. Tulsi Gabbard got beat up, got shunned, got smeared all because she went down there. What you need to do, you pump behind politicians, instead of observing it from a different view way back in Washington, D.C. with some kind of report or some kind of intel crap, which could not be true. Go down there and see for yourself. Go down there and talk to the people. But none of you would do it because you're too much a punk to do it and you thought it would be enabling Assad. Go down and meet the man. Go down and meet the staff. Go down and meet the people. That's how you can tell whether somebody are in, uh, under distress, uh, under uh, pressure and control, and whether people freely love their, their leader. When you go down there, but you're too punk to go down there. She went down there. She met with the people. She saw heard, heard the stories of the white helmet. She heard the story of the Syrian gas attack, the pictures and all that, and the propaganda all behind that. She went back and said, um, I want you to take a look at um, Syria, Mr. President. Uh, I'm giving you a shot. Democrats don't like me right now because I refuse to toe the party line. But I'm not about parties. I'm about people. And I'm about my military being protected. And I don't want them going out there giving their life over a bunch of BS. So Trump took a look at it. In the meantime, Tulsi Gabbard tried to get a bill passed, which the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, mostly Democrats, took that bill and wiped their behind with it. And then scolded her for that bill. Now, I know, and there's other people politically um, uh, on YouTube channel, uh, they had some good points, and I heard them about that particular bill. Yeah, it didn't go far enough. It need to criminalize people who uh, don't go along with that bill, who break that law and still continue to fund terrorists. I don't care if it was from mercenaries. I don't care if it was from Blackwater or whoever. If you continue to fund these terrorists and the top of down governments, which you have nothing to do with, then, hey, let the people do their own thing. We don't need to fund it. That's the problem we have with the Koch brothers, and that's the problem we have with Soros, and that's the reason we have racial tension in America right now, because we got two wealthy, business class, white, um, um, uh, colonial thinking individuals bankrolling aggressive protests. Anyway, let me get back to the subject. In this situation, what Donald Trump did was he said, okay, since they don't want to pass it, I'll do an executive order, and I will stop the funding of terrorism. Now, I'm going to go into detail on this executive order because I want to make sure the executive order really hold people accountable, whether it's individually or some kind of faction or some kind of group or some company. Hold them in contempt. Hold them accountable if they do decide to fund terrorists. Jill Stein being the smartest person in the bunch like I told you and that's the reason why I brought this up she said the easiest way to destroy Al Qaeda is or any kind of terrorists which a lot of it we create by funding them is to starve them of weapons and money. A lot of weapons that Al Qaeda had, a lot of weapons that ISIL had or ISIS had, they got it when we decided to build up armies in Iraq, we decided to build up armies in Libya, they took over the weapons. Well, they didn't necessarily took over the weapons. We gave it to them and we gave them money to fight against the opposition leadership there, the leadership of that country so we can topple them overthrow them and install who we think would be best to be in that country. Hillary Clinton got a tape uh, when it come, came to Palestinian um, elections. Uh, I think we should, uh, you know, we should hold that off until we found somebody who we believe should be in that office. Then go ahead and implement that program. Put what we, who we think should be in the office. That's the problem with the Democratic Party right now, and that's why they lose it. That philosophy right there. And that's why you lost Anyway, what happened was he decided not to fund terrorists. And he decided 
not to take out any more air forces. And he decided to support uh, any party, including Putin, who's going to fight against terrorism, true terrorism, what he called radical Islamic terrorism. Now, he didn't, it's not radical Islam, it's radical Islamic terrorism. So he's separating the faction of terrorism within, within Islam, just like there's a faction within white Christianity that are terrorists. And that's what we're dealing with, the neo-Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan in general, white nationalists, which is still radical, white supremacy, terrorism. Now, as a result of him not pushing hard on the Syria thing, them actually pushing away this defunding and de-weaponizing uh, the so-called Syrian rebels, which most of them are terrorists. When we took away the money, when we took away the weapons, they have no way to fight. When we leave the air support alone in Syria and let their let them do what they need to do with their air support. They push back the terrorists. And now the people are coming back in town. The town that they love so much. <laughs> Getting to this article which is from a, uh, APR. Uh, the UN says more than 60 NPR. <laughs> I was going to say AARP. Brother getting old. Uh, the UN says more than 600,000 Syrians have returned home in 2017 this is a beautiful story now if you see the picture here I don't know how to do OBS and all that kind of stuff so I, I'll try to put the picture up uh, it's this picture right here uh, see this picture these nice buses there wasn't bro broke down buses These nice buses are pulling in where people are going back to their home that is a good thing that is a good thing it says Syrians arrived last month from Jerobolus in Aleppo province to their old neighborhood of Al Wur in Homs, Syria. They left their home to escape the government of Syria, President Bashar, and now they're going back. That's what they say. A rising number of Syrians who fled are returning to their homes with more than 600,000 going back in the first seven months of the year, according to the International Organization for Migration. The UN Migration Agency says that a number uh, is comparable to the numbers of returns spanning the entire year in 2016. The Syrian gov government has been stressing that people are coming home. NPR's Ruth Sherlock report and state media have been posting photos and account of such returns, such as the one you see right here. However, it's worth noting that the rate of new displacement during the beginning of this year was significantly higher than the number of returns, according to IOM, an estimated 808,000 were displaced, many for the second and third term of over six million, and told the current remaining displaced within history. Most of these going home, eighty four percent was displaced in Syria. The next highest number of people returned from Turkey, followed by Lebanon, Jordan, and Iraq. The migration agency says that their returns have mainly been spontaneous but not necessarily voluntarily safe or sustainable, adding that they cannot at present be considered within the context of a durable solution framework. <clears throat> Aleppo uh, governorate saw the highest number of 67%, and Aleppo city was the most common destination there. In December, government troops recaptured the part of Aleppo city that had been held by rebels, by terrorists, for four years, though there are still portions of the government that are rebel held. People gave many reasons for coming home. 27% said they were returning to protect their assets and property. 25% said it was because the economic situation got better in the area they are from in Syria. 14% said it was because the economic situation got worse in the area where they had fled to. 11% now that don't sound right. I'm coming back because uh, oh where they fled to. 11% uh, said it was because of social and cultural issues such as tribal links, political affiliation, or any other obstacles preventing integration in their area of displacement. 11% said it was because of improvements in security situations in the area they wanted to return to. Nearly all of the returnees, 97%, were able to return to their homes 
with the remaining 3% living with hosts in abandoned or rented accommodation or informal settlements, according to the IOM. But the country's devastating structure means that just 41% of, re of returnees have access to water and 39% to health services, thanks to bombing by terrorists. According to the BBC, the UN Refugee Agency recently started scaling uh, up its operation inside Syria to better address the needs of those returning home, even as it discouraged people from doing so, stressing safety concerns. And there are signs that many Syrians who fled believe that they will never return. Uh, the PR firm, I don't want to hear nothing the PR firm says, uh, so I'm going to skip that, read it on your own. Earlier this month, Roof reported on a different kind of return says thousands of Syrians displaced in Lebanon returned to Syria as part of a deal after months of fighting along the border with Lebanon. But these are not Syrians going back to their homes, she said. Here's more. These are people who are being taken to uh, Idlib, which is a province in far in my mind. So what happened then? All right. You can read that report on your own. So the bottom line is 600,000 Syrians have returned home. They feel they can return home safe because of the decision that was made between America, the Syrian government, and Russia. Those three deciding to tag up tag team against terrorism have allowed us to push them back out of the country. It's not over yet. And people to come back to their homes. Prior to all this stuff happening, and prior to us trying to interfere, interfere into Syria and trying to talk regime change and overcoming overthrowing their government before ISIS and ISIL got a stronghold in that area the government as it was a thriving democracy new now so you can't expect them to be just like America a thriving democracy the people voted for their presidents and their leaders they were multicultural you had all colors there White, black, Chinese, you know, it's a cultural hub. Religions were tolerable. You can be a Christian and live peacefully in Syria and preach and teach in Syria without going through a whole bunch of rigmarole. Sure, there's the voice of the martyrs. There are people who oftentimes get killed because of their faith, but that happens in every country. Every country. We just saw a man who was a preacher just because he looked like he was a mean dude got shot innocently by police with their hands up a preacher so I think this good news I said I'm gonna give Trump credit what credit is due uh, I'm gonna talk about next him finally acknowledging by words disavowing and calling out to the carpet of white supremacist terrorists I'm gonna talk about that in the next video but this right here is a good thing. Now, just to remind you, I'm not on nobody's train. Nobody train. I don't like partyism because I think it's a form of separatism. I don't like the division, uh, fighting between Republican, Democrat, Trump, and the Democrat. I don't like all that. I think we just need to let that man do what he need to do to legislate. And when he legislate horribly, you call him out and push back against it. And he's been doing a lot of that. And we don't need no fake calling out. We need real hard, aggressive calling out and pushing back against that. But when he do right, you give him his credit, credit due, which is I'm doing, which is what I'm doing here. The same thing with Congress. If Congress do something right by the people, you celebrate it. You lift it up. You hold it up. It's good. But when they do wrong by the people, you call them out, you push hard on them, and push back on them. I see them all the same. I'm not on nobody's side. I'm on the side of the people and justice. And when you do right by the people, I'm going to give you props. When you do wrong by the people, I'm going to give you props. We're going to save a lot of money <coughs> not doing regimes change in Syria. Now, do I trust that Trump may not change his mind? I don't trust any politician. They can change their mind. They can be pressured to change their mind. That's what's wrong with Washington, D.C. right now. Money pressure people. The military complex pressure people. The next election pressure people. So, yeah, he can change his mind. But at this moment, I'm giving him credit. 
600,000 people have returned back to the home they love and the country they love. Hopefully it can get back to the point where it can be, you can't expect it to be like America's democracy. And we can't get mad at them because they're not like us. It's going to take a long time to get to where they need to go. We're still working with true democracy. We still are dealing with racism after the Civil War has been won hundreds of years ago. Since we've been in America, this was supposed to be in the land of the free and the home of the brave, and we enslaved people. And to this day, we're still trying to fight white supremacy or any other kind of supremacy and fascism. So we haven't arrived yet, so why do we think other countries need to be like us? Anyway, on Bob TV, this is a good thing. Tulsi Gabbard, you got you didn't have to go to Congress to get it done. You got it. Donald Trump gave it to you. And I'm going to give him props on that. Now, I'm not done. There could be some underlining things I need to look at. You know, because some things sound too good to be true. Probably are. <laughs> but, um, you know, now certain religions can be practiced in Syria. Even if you don't believe in a religion, you can practice that in Syria. But if you let it become a ISIS stronghold by funding them the top of the government, do you actually believe ISIL is going to let the United States allow us to put one of our leaders in control? No. So this is a good thing, and I uh, just want to report it on Robert Brown, Freedom of Fire. I'll let you later. Peace. Hey, this is your boy Bob TV with Freedom on Fire and Rob Report. I want to thank you for watching the webcast. Make sure you share these um, segments all across your social media network. Um, like and share, subscribe, and maybe I invite a couple other people to do the same thing. Uh, you make the difference. I also want to thank you for those who support this channel through Patreon, uh, whether it's 10, 50 cent to $50 million. I, I, it goes right back into what we do here. Uh, so like the lights that you're looking at right now, that's because of something that you did. So I really appreciate it. I want to thank my man Veggie Matic for the Blue Yeti mic, one of the top microphones out right now. Um, he knew I needed the mic, so he blessed me with it. So all of you guys make the difference into this channel growing, and I really want to appreciate you for that. Also, by all means, again, continue to uh, share your comments um, at the bottom of each video. Just don't get so visceral to the people who may disagree with me or may disagree with you. This calling out name stuff, um, that's not for this channel. So please try not to call people names, personal names. Now you can call some of the stuff they talk about crap. I say that, but uh, uh, but just don't attack people personally. Uh, words really hurt when you start attacking people personally because these people really believe these things and you're not gonna take away their belief by calling them names. So please don't do that on this channel. But nevertheless, I appreciate you guys. We're shooting for 2,000 now, uh, so I need your help. So um, as my past would say, reach one, teach one. I mean, let's reach out. You got the information. Make sure you share with other people and try to get them to subscribe to the channel so we can grow and expand. Again, the money, the finances that you give in your Patreon account, uh, it goes into equipment. So uh, I want to thank you for helping, personally helping this endeavor grow. I'm Bob TV. Freedom on fire. Rob Report. Peace.